I like making plans, making decisions about the future. We all like telling stories about what has happened and what's to come. Having a plan is comforting. Knowing the future provides a deep sense of security. But the farther ahead you plan, the less you know about how things are actually going to go down. Having a plan often leads to a worse outcome. Premature decisions are made with poor information, but changing them later is hard. When the time for action comes, a plan limits your options and blinds you to opportunities. A plan holds you back from responding to the situation at hand. It locks you in. Changing, uh, changing a decision that you made and communicated too early is both emotionally and logistically difficult. When opportunities arise, it's difficult to take advantage without rendering your planning effort worthless. No plan survives contact with the enemy. Whether you're up against an opposing force, your customers, your boss, even Sydney Public Transport, they will conspire to confound your plan, to leave following it worthless, even dangerous. Modern militaries recognise this, and so orders are founded on a statement of commander's intent. This is a concise expression of the purpose of the operation. It describes what and why, but not how. It ensures that when more detailed plans are inevitably derailed, subordinates can use their initiative to carry on without waiting for more orders. You can make better decisions later with more information and reduced uncertainty. Some situations will disappear entirely. Circumstances will change. But when the time for action comes, you want to be in the best, most informed position. My own endeavour of building software has come to recognise this constant change. Best practices today encourage agility over too much planning and design up front. They prepare developers to embrace change and to seize opportunities presented by new technologies. Agile principles advocate designing and building only what's absolutely necessary. They ask for the simplest possible thing that works, nothing more. This encourages developers to learn about the problem while solving it, instead of imagining that we can conceive the whole solution at the outset. Planning the future requires predicting it. When you make a decision far in advance, you need to make unnecessary assumptions about the situation, about yourself and about others. It's this prediction that brings comfort. You fool yourself into believing you know what's going to happen. But this leads to anxiety and grief when you turn out to be wrong. Some of my darkest moments are when I've planned to be somewhere, sometime, and public transport betrays me. <laughs> I, get a, I get upset because I'm attached to the story that the timetable tells and the stories that I tell myself. When something goes awry, it feels like something I had, that knowledge of the future, has been stolen away. I want that comfort back, but that wanting for something that I can't have is miserable. You probably know someone who makes planning very difficult. <laughs> they refuse to commit. They don't hold promises. They're always late. They don't reply to your messages, which are buried in an overflowing inbox. I mean, what is wrong with these people? Are they so bad at managing information? You also know someone who plans meticulously and expects others to do the same. They use inbox zero. They want to be in control. Think on these people for a few moments. Which one is happier? <laughs> be the first person. Be the happy irritation, not the unhappy planner. Procrastination, leaving the unimportant tasks till later, is actually a technique of effective people. They're not bad at managing information. They're better than us at managing, at prioritising their time. When you don't have a plan, you are, you are free to live in the moment. The emotional and adrenal boost of working on something you need right now will help you work better. At the last moment, with the best information to hand, you'll be more excited and motivated to excel. And you're more capable than you think. People tend to plan well within their abilities. We rarely choose to push the boundaries, so planning limits your opportunities for growth. By unplanning your life, you can learn more about yourself and experience the healthy stress which helps you grow. And not planning doesn't mean stumbling around in confusion. You still need to make decisions, to take action. But responding to life as it happens is coordination, not planning. You can arm yourself to make good decisions, gather knowledge and resources, and prepare yourself to make those decisions when the time comes. Uh, if you can communicate a broad intent and encourage flexibility, then everyone can react appropriately when surprises crop up. Prepare yourself and others for whatever situation arises. But the tragedy of planning is that it puts you in blinkers. It hides the unexpected opportunities from you while you're waiting for looking at that next milestone. Be prepared for serendipity. And while looking ahead, dreaming about the wonder that awaits at the next milestone, 
Remember that where you are now is also beautiful. The road ahead is lined with fragrant roses, hidden detours, and other travellers with stories to share. Take your comfort from living in the present. It's probably the best way to plan for the future anyway. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.